Hello and welcome to Story Talks. My name is Tess and I'm from State Library Victoria. And today it's my pleasure to chat with Sally Rippon, author of the Hey Jack books, the Polly and Buster books, the Billy B. Brown books. Sally, welcome to Story Talks. It's so exciting to be here, also in my home. So it's really nice for us to all be in our homes and still stay connected. First, we have a question from superfan Ari. I was wondering, um, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I used to always look at grown-ups and think about what it was that I wanted to do when I was their age, because a lot of them never looked like they really enjoyed their jobs very much. You know, my dad would put on a suit in the morning and he'd go out all day and he'd come home at the end of the day and complain about his work. And I thought, gosh, if that's what it is to be grown up, I'm not sure if I want a part of that. So when I was young, I guess I had a very, very big imagination and I still do. And that's what I do each day. But I would get lost in reading books and writing stories and drawing pictures to go with them. But I never dreamt that that could actually be a job because I always thought a job was like what my dad did with the suit, you'd go to work, you'd come home. I couldn't imagine that you could have a job that you would love as much as something that you do all day, every day for the fun of it. So I never, ever thought about being an author or an illustrator because that was just what I did for fun. That's what I would do um, sometimes in school or sometimes at home. And then, shall I show you something, Tess? I've got something here to show you. When I was a teenager, I used to make books for children that I babysat. And I found one of these not that long ago. So I thought I'd show you what it looked like. So I was probably about 15 when I made this one. So this is what I've done my whole life for fun. And this is just a handmade book that I made on my kitchen table. And wow. we're gonna talk about making books today, but this is the kind of book that you can all make. And I made hundreds of these growing up. And it was for a little girl I used to babysit whose name was Amy probably still is Amy but it was for her fifth birthday as you can see is the dedication in there and I would just find any old pencils and paper that I could find around the house and I remember that the cover was from an old cereal packet and this is what I did for fun so I never dreamed that you could do this for a job and now I get to do it every day I can't quite believe it. Billy B Brown you've written so many books about Billy B tell us oh this is Billy B here for a close-up the beautiful haircut, great read. <laughs> uh, tell us about when Billy B came into your life. Well, Billy is a very special character for me. And I first started to dream up Billy when my own son, who's now 17, was in grade two. Because I was mum doing reading help in the classroom and I could see that a lot of the other kids by about grade two, they were starting to be able to read on their own. And my son, didn't seem to be able to, even though his two older brothers, they picked up reading quite easily, he got really stuck. So he started saying things like, I hate reading. And can you imagine, I'm an author, that's the worst thing that you can hear your kids say. But it was because he wanted to read stories that were interesting, that had characters and action and funny bits, but he was still reading a lot of the books that teach you to read and he wasn't able to move on from there. He got really, really stuck. So I thought I need to write a series that would be interesting for readers like him or other readers that might find reading a little bit challenging where the stories are interesting and there's great characters, but the words are a lot like the kind of words you might find in a school reader. So I set that as my goal and I would run them all past my son. I would test them out on him. And he wasn't very good at listening back then. He's still not great at listening, but if he started to look around or to, if I lost his attention, then I'd go back and I'd write the story again and again until if he would listen to the whole story, I'd know that it was working and that I got it right. And I think Billy is also very special to me because she's a lot like me as a little girl when I was growing up. So she's a little bit braver than I was, but a lot of the games she plays and the imagination she has is a lot like me and Jack, is a lot like my son when he was growing up. And in fact, after I'd written quite a few of the Billy stories, he said, well, why do we never get to hear from Jack? Why do we always just get to hear from Billy? It was actually his idea to come up with the Jack series. So that's a very special series to me because they show the reading journey of my son and he still struggles with reading because he's dyslexic, which means that he's very smart, but reading is always going to be challenging for him. But he reads lots of manga, 
and he reads lots of interesting things online and he's studying science and he likes maths and science. But I feel like that sometimes if you just find the right book, it can inspire you to want to keep on persisting with reading because it can be sometimes hard in the beginning. Well, Sally, because you are so great at creating stories, could you help us get started with one? What would we do first? Well, I think the most important thing is to never worry about what you first get done as being your best work. So it's impossible really for the, when I'm writing stories, I will always start off with a notebook, just a cheap scrappy notebook that I can put all my ideas down in. I can put drawings, I can put words, shopping lists, whatever comes into my head. And that means that I'm not worried about what goes in there or worried about it being my best writing or good spelling. It's just really where all my ideas start to bubble up. And so that's a really good place to start. But sometimes when you have to sit down and write a story, maybe in class or sit down at home and you want to get a story started and you just don't know how to actually make the story start, what you need to do is to introduce a problem because you actually can't have a story without a problem. So probably the easiest way you can do this is to invent a character, have a think about what their everyday life is like. And maybe they have a pretty boring life. Like maybe just if you've got Gordo the gorilla, for example, maybe just every day he swings through the jungle looking for bananas to eat. But that's not really a story because nothing happens. So you have to give him a problem. You have to make one day something happen. So every day Gordo the gorilla swings through the trees looking for bananas, but one day all the bananas are gone. There you go, you have a mystery. Or one day he sees a beautiful lady gorilla that becomes a love story. Or one day there is a big spaceship lands in the jungle and maybe that's a science fiction story. So depending on what you decide to create as your big problem, that is where your story will begin. So it's a really good thing to start. Think of everyday life and then say, but one day or but one evening or but one Saturday afternoon and that's when your story starts. That's a great way to start a story, Sally. Something that you would do every day and then something interrupts that. So for those of you watching, I'm going to encourage you to make your own book. It's really easy. You just need two pieces of paper, put them together and fold them in half. And then you've got a book. Maybe later on you can staple it if you like. Quinn has already had a practice at this. She's seven. And this is her start to her story. Do, 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 do. She's just having a normal day, brushing her teeth, and then something strange is going to interrupt her. What could it be? What's this? Two people have come in with a present for her. And Sally, can you see what's in the present? Oh no, is that snakes? It's snakes. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, I love Quinn's example, and I'm really curious to see where her story could go. Maybe she'll keep drawing and keep telling the story, or maybe she might like to use this book as an ideas book, because coming up in the next videos, we've got so many more ideas for you to get creative with and start telling stories. Sally, thank you for that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're gonna be talking about getting creative. I'll see you then.